Okay, so we will go ahead and get started and anybody else joins us, they can just come on in. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about campaigns in command. So what when I say that, we're specifically talking about Facebook campaigns because there are lots of different campaigns that you can do. You can do direct mail, um, <clears throat> you can do email campaigns, you can do... Um, just other like types of advertising in there, but um, Facebook campaigns have so much potential in them for very low cost. So we're gonna go over some best practices for those, some ideas. Um, the these are the paid Facebook campaigns, but when I say paid, it's not something that you have to spend a lot of money on. Like you, you know, run a campaign for twenty bucks for a week or something like that, and what happens is. Um, everything feeds into command. So like the leads from it feed in, everything like that. Hi. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. We, we have the same necklace on. Please? Julie's daughter has it too. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Randy got hit with the door. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> He's You've been married a long time, Randy. You know that. <laughs> That's what Pat, is Pat coming? Yes. Okay. I thought, I literally told myself, I thought Pat told me she was coming. Um, so we haven't really gotten too far yet, you guys. So, um, yeah, so I was just explaining that we're talking about specifically Facebook campaigns through command. So um, you have always been able to run Facebook paid campaigns through the ad manager on Facebook, but because we have a paid partnership, uh, not a paid partnership, a partnership with Facebook, we actually have a lot of things that are going to benefit you to from running these campaigns within command as opposed to going to Facebook. The one thing is, um, if you've ever used the ad manager on Facebook, it's pretty convoluted. So if you're not someone who really knows the ins and outs of all that advertising stuff, um, then it can be really overwhelming. And the thing is, like you come into real estate and you're like, okay, I'm a real estate agent, but also I've got to be a professional marketer and a professional graphic designer and all those things. Hello. Hi. Randy's even got your coffee for you. <laughs> I think that's yours. No, that's mine, isn't it, Randy? Yeah, I think that's yours. <laughs> what that's do you want to do? I'll sit here. <laughs> so, did you start early? No, it's 11 or 4. It's my watch. Uh, <laughs> okay. I knew you were coming, though, because you, you told me. I did tell you. You did tell me. Um, so... Anyway, you get into it and you've got to be all these other things and it's like they don't teach you how to market and advertise in real estate school on social media. Um, and so what they've done with command is they've eliminated a lot of the stuff on the Facebook ad manager that just kind of complicates it and isn't related to real estate. And you're going to see how you have very minimal steps that you even have to go through to create these ads. They kind of filter out anything that doesn't have to do with housing so that that way all you have is the housing, real estate related um, options in here. And three out of four Facebook users are going to visit the page of a local business at least once a week. So three out of four, that's 75%, right? So um, that's a lot of people. They're visiting things like your business page. So keep in mind to run these campaigns, you do have to have a Facebook business page set up. Are you coming in here? Okay, yeah, you're good. <laughs> um, uh-huh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so with Command, um, using the Campaigns app and the Smart Plans app, we're gonna talk about how those really go hand in hand because we lead generation doesn't exist on its own, right? Because we have to lead follow up. And so the campaign is going to help with us generating the leads. It's going to generate it for us. And then you're going to get those leads into command. And then from there, Smart Plans is going to allow you to do the lead follow-up. And it's going to help automate a lot of that as well for you too. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I love this. I love that we're like packing and moving today. And I have like a full class. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, I was just I just wanted to let you know you have some people that came to your class today. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, I love that it's like we're moving and whatever, and like I have like a full class. I know, I it's so them. great. I'm so glad. Right, let me take out quick break. Just Thank you. Thanks, Lily. So, what we're going to do, we're kind of going to be back and forth between K 
campaigns um, and smart plans, talking about some best practices for those in there today. I'm going to give you some ideas of um, types of campaigns to run to kind of, that are going to get the most clicks because you want to make sure that when you're spending your money on advertising, you're spending your money on things that are going to get you more leads, right? And keep in mind, some of this stuff is trial and error. So you might try something and you might get five leads from it, whereas someone else did a similar one and got 30. Uh, that's why it's like you got to just start kind of testing it out, testing it out in our market and things like that. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> um, we are going to go into the campaigns app. So on the left side, go down to campaigns right here. It's the megaphone. And like I said, there's lots of different types of campaigns you can do in here, but we are specifically talking about paid ads for social media in here. So um, we could spend hours going through all of the other types of campaigns. So I do kind of separate classes on each of those. So we're talking about paid ads up here. Now, one thing I want you to notice here on our dashboard is over on the right. You see how we have connected accounts over here? So in the settings of command, I've done you, well, That's interesting. you made me haven't connected it yet, which we'll get to. Okay. I'm, I'm just pointing out where it kind of is on my screen right here. So we're looking at connected accounts. So um, you to run these ads, you do have to connect your Facebook business page to command so that it knows where to run the ad. So if you haven't done that, you can click. Um, I believe there should be a manage button on there. I don't. And these will come up here. I did. Okay. So, and that, uh, oh, you clicked on paid campaigns. We're still on the dashboard. Uh, yep. I'm still on the dashboard. I don't have those. So, don't worry. That's why I always have my second option, which is you're going to click on your name in the top right. So, what I wasn't sure of is if manage just shows up once you have accounts connected. So, you click on your name in the top right. Which one should I do? Manage or my name? It doesn't matter. If you already have them connected, then you don't have to worry about it. I don't. So either way, I'll, if everyone wants to click on their name and click settings, then you'll do that. And this is where you connect any accounts to command. How about Instagram? <clears throat> so we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that because you can advertise on Instagram, but it's connected through Facebook. Um, so I'll explain how that works when we get to that point. So you want to scroll through this. Um, yours will be in a different order than mine if you don't have them connected because your connected ones show at the top. But you'll scroll through. You're going to see Facebook on here twice. One says post scheduling. One says ads manager. You're looking for the ads manager one for this specific one right here. They both are for different things. So we're talking about the ads manager one. So you're going to look for that. And again, if you do not have a Facebook business page set up yet for your business, you, don't, you won't connect anything yet. You'll need to do that first, which that's something you, know, you can take care of later. Um, but you do have to have that to, to connect it to command. So over on the right, you should have an option to connect an account. You're signing in with your personal Facebook account on there and you're just selecting your business page. Um, and when you go to advertise, if you are someone who maybe you are, have like other businesses as well, so you've got a multiple business pages. I don't know if that applies to anybody. I have some people that it does. When you go to do, do the actual campaign, you'll choose your real estate one specifically on there. So does everybody understand where to go to connect so the account? It just says on here on mine, it just says, it's got the Keller Williams thing on there and that says connect as Jonathan. So it says, mm -hmm. skip connect. Yeah. Because it will only work to, to a business page. So it will look like it's you. So like mine right here says Jennifer Paul's on it. Um, but mine is like the office business page that I even have it connected to. So uh, though it just says my name right here, the ad would run on the business page because I would select that. <clears throat> so um, that's where you're going to manage that. Does everybody, anybody have any questions about where that is? Anything like that? We all good on that? Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. <laughs> so that's where that is if you need to connect that or any other accounts. So. Once you have that connected, we'll go back to campaigns. <clears throat> so now here, um, you should see it over on the right, over there under paid ads. Um, and I'm going to go over, I'm going to toggle into the paid ads top of 
the, at the top right now because the dashboard section. Hmm? It shows my regular Facebook page. Um, yeah, see how mine does too? Okay. Yeah, it has my name, my profile photo, but when I go to advertise, I'll be selecting it. And y'all will see okay. that when we get there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's what I meant by mine looks like it's very much my personal one. But an advertisement cannot go to a personal page. So like it physically won't. Uh, you'll have a drop down menu where you oh, can okay. choose. So that's why I was saying if you've got multiple businesses or something like that, and you have a like couple business pages, like I have a couple business pages that are connected to my personal one, and I can choose which one I want. So you just go to the personal one first, and then yes, all your business ones. Are yeah, anyway, right? yeah, because you have to have a personal one to make a business page. All right. So the dashboard here, that's going to house information related to all the types of campaigns. So we want to toggle into paid ads now. <clears throat> this dashboard is where you'll be able to manage any active campaigns, see data from previous ones. You'll be able to see like the statistics of the campaigns you're getting. So what's your your cost per click is, how many leads you've gotten. It will show you the cost of like basically what your cost per lead is. Yeah. Does it only pull the ones that are created for the paid? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this is specifically for that. So if you were creating them outside of in within Facebook, um, you would have to go there for that data. Okay. Yeah. She's already got, I already have some running oh, okay. through Facebook, and I just connected it to this, but I thought maybe it'll take it. Yes. Out. No, it will have to be created through here. Um, and um, one of the reasons that we like to do them from here is so through that partnership that we have with Facebook. When you go to Facebook and you run an ad on your business page, Facebook sees it as like, so if I if my business page was Jennifer Paul's KW Cleveland and I went to Facebook and I created an ad, Facebook sees it as me, just Jennifer Paul's KW Cleveland, run, you know, how much money I'm spending on ads. Well, when you run it through command, you're you get under that KW umbrella, and so it looks at it as like all of the agents within KW that are running those ads. So it sees like our ad spend is significantly higher, right? Because we've got tens of thousands of agents running ads. And so it helps you get better placement for those ads. And the better placement helps you get lower cost per lead as well too. So um, that's one of the really great benefits from it. Yeah. So does the billing for it all run through one ad account? Uh, no. So it will go through your, like it will show up on your business page as if you, because you're the one running the ad, the leads will come directly into your command. You set up your payment for it on here. Okay. It's just within that, you're kind of under this KW umbrella yeah. basically. Okay. <clears throat> yes. So um, obviously mine aren't going to have any stats on them just because they're all just, just drafts. I don't actually have listings to advertise or anything like that because I'm not in the business, but mine are all drafts from classes. So what we're going to do, talk through some practices for creating campaigns. Um, I'm going to show you like an example of a listing one um, that I kind of created yesterday to kind of talk about like good best practices for um, your ad copy and things like that and, and the different sections that you're going to be really putting information in. So, um, <clears throat> feel free, even if you're not going to run this campaign right now, you can always click through what I'm clicking on to kind of see it, or you can just watch it on here and kind of make notes. So, in the top right, you have the Create Campaign button. This is where you're going to choose the type of campaign. So, like I said, we're doing specifically social ads. So, when you select this, you're going to name your campaign. Always name it something that um, like is going to help you remember what type of ad you ran because you're going to want to track like the success of the different types of campaigns, right? If something that doesn't work well, you don't want to run the same type of campaign again, right? If you didn't get any leads from it. Um, so one of the best type of campaigns that you can do to get the most clicks and the most leads just based on the, the research that they've done as they've had agents running campaigns through here is advertising listings. Whether that is an active listing of yours or if you don't have a listing, if you get, you know, get approval from another agent to use one of theirs, typically people are not going to tell you no on that. They're going to say, absolutely, please, please get my listing more exposure and hopefully find me a buyer, right? So listings are one of the best things that you can advertise. So you just always remember you do need to get the approval from the agent before you do that if it is not your listing. 
So <clears throat> we'll talk some, through some other ideas, but um, I'm going to set this up as if it was a listing one because that's kind of what I created an example of yesterday. So you would want to name your campaign, maybe that address of that listing. Uh, so if I was like 123 Main Street, just listed, something like that, just so I can remember and I can track all of those types of campaigns. And you can also choose what your goal is here. This is mainly, again, to help you in looking at the history of the types of campaigns that you've run and seeing, okay, okay, my advertised listing ones tend to be my most successful ones. Uh, brand awareness hasn't worked super well. So I need, you know, knowing where to spend your money, basically. So I would choose advertised listing on this one. Now, the answer to Pat's question that you asked earlier, you asked me about Instagram. So what it's going to give you the option for down here is you can actually run campaigns through here for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, agents have tended to have the most success, lowest cost per lead, all the things from doing either Facebook or Facebook and Instagram combined together. You can run a campaign on here for Instagram and not actually have an Instagram business page set up. So if you're like, that's overwhelming for me to have two types of social media. I want to really focus on just, just Facebook first and really getting that up and running. My advice is always like start with one and get comfortable with it. Don't feel like you have to be showing up on every platform every day. Like get, get to a place where you feel comfortable with Facebook before adding Instagram. But if when you run a campaign, you want it to show up on both places because you know that there's two different audiences really in both of those places, right? Like, um, and so you can select both Facebook and Instagram. And what it does is it literally just creates like a sponsored either Instagram story or feed post because you can choose either on there and it will have the profile photo from your business page and it will name it your business, your Facebook business page as well, but on Instagram. So it looks like an Instagram, but then it just links back to your Facebook business page there. Um, so that's why there's not a specific connection for it in there, but you are able to advertise on it. So it can show up as like a swipe up on Instagram stories if you're familiar with that. And you don't have to even actually be using Instagram on it. So I'm going to select both just so you guys can kind of see what it might look like if you do those. But understand that you do not have to do that. You can just do Facebook. Um, so I'm going to select both on here. And then I'm going to click Create Campaign. <clears throat> so um, this is the part I wanted to show you before I go into my other test one I started setting up yesterday. I'm like, the, on the on like the Food Network where they're like, okay, we're gonna put the brownies in the oven and then magically they have the other ones over here. So we're gonna go look at that one in a second. But I wanted you to see how, because we said we wanted to advertise a listing, it's gonna pop up right here and it's gonna show only my listings over there. Of course, I don't have any. Now, don't be alarmed if you do have listings and it doesn't show up here. Sometimes it filters funky. So you can change where it says only my listings to all listings if you need to to find it, or if, you're, if you've gotten approval to advertise another agent's listing, then you can click on all listings so that you can find it. So you're able to select the listing and what this is gonna do, it's gonna make it where you don't have to upload the photos because you can choose any of your photos from the MLS on it and they're automatically going to be there for you to access. So little things like that that just make the process quicker, right? So again, another awesome benefit of running it through command because everything is connected. So I'm just going to grab one of these. They're obviously from other, like this is connected to literally most MLSs across the country. So um, if you're searching up here for a property address, put as much as you can in there to try to get it narrowed down. So if you would see your listing and you would click the select button, okay? And then it now has the image. Of course, I'm gonna show you how we can change the main image, add more, all of that. But does that make sense to you guys as far as um, how to select the listing if you are, if that's what you're advertising? Like how you find it in there and everything like that? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna just go out of this one really quickly and open up my other test one so we can kind of talk through that. So 
but I'm just going to go click. If you, and if you ever save them as drafts like this, because you don't have to finish all of it in one day. So if you're like setting up one, maybe you're just getting prepped because you know you're about it's about to be active and you want to tell it to start running the day that you put that listing in the MLS, you can save them as a draft in here so that you have it ready. So you can do your prep work ahead of time. Um, and these three dots on the right will let you edit it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into this one I started yesterday <clears throat> to kind of talk through um, each of these options over on the left. So the first thing you see at the top left is name and goal. That will usually already have your green check mark because that's what we picked when we created the campaign, right? We told it, here's the name of our campaign and what your goal is. So it's basically a little checklist that you go through. So you can change anything after the fact. So then this listing part, this will show up if you're doing like an advertised listing campaign or something like that. Um, you'll see it here at the top. And so we had selected the listing. So it already it shows up here for us. Now, <clears throat> the next one is your text. So we're going to open up that. So what you're going to notice, I want you guys to look over on the right side at the example. So it is showing you a preview of what that will look like. And um, I know that is, um, I think one of Rhonda McClure's listings. <laughs> I just like thought of her and so I was like, I'm going to see what she has that I can use as an example. Um, it is very pretty. <clears throat> so um, on the right, you're going to notice a couple different areas of text, right? So above the photo, you have couple sentences here. This is your main copy. So if you want to look over on the right and then over on the left to kind of see where each of these boxes goes, right? Because that's good to understand where I'm, what I'm typing here, where's that going to show up for me, right? Um, and then we'll talk through e the difference between each of those. So you have your main copy. It's going to show up right above the photo. So it's going to kind of be one of the first things that they see. Then they'll see the image. And then below that, you have a headline right here, okay? You'll see it's a little bit, it's bolder, slightly bigger font. And then below that, you have a description. The description is technically talking about the description of this button. You see the button on the right side that says learn more? You can, we can change later what that says. Um, learn more tends to be the best one to use in these because it feels the least aggressive, right? Because what you want people to click so that you can get the lead in command. Um, and if it says something like sign up or anything like that, they can't, it feels like, oh, like, I don't know if I want to sign up for something. But if they're just like, learn more, it's like, oh, a little invitation, you know? <laughs> so um, what that little description is, is describing what's going to happen or what are they going to get when they click on that learn more button. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Where'd you get that little hatchet? Uh, I'll show you. Yes. So, <clears throat> um, they, uh, it is recommended to use emojis in your ad copy and social media posts because they tend to get more engagement. They help, they almost like help guide your eye as you're reading. They break up chunks of text. They help stop the scroll. There's lots of research that's been done about it. Um, so <clears throat> let's start with main ad copy. Okay. So most important thing you want to think about with main ad copy is this is not your MLS description. Okay. So your MLS description is not necessarily written in the same way that you might write advertising copy. And the reason is you have all this space to write an MLS description, right? On here, you have, you're very limited on what you can write and also if you guys are scrolling on Facebook, are you going to stop and read like two paragraphs? Or are you going to keep scrolling like, oh, that was a cute picture and like, oh, that's a lot to read. You know what I mean? Think about yourself and your habits when you're on social media, you're scrolling through what stops you from scrolling, right? Like what stops your finger and makes you be like, oh, like I'm, you know, like our attention spans these days are so much shorter because of things like social media. So we need like these small bites of like text, right? Like easily digestible. So you want to think about that. Whereas your MLS description, you're really describing the, the everything about the house, right? Now feel free to use information from it. But what you'll notice, because when you do select like a listing, it will try to autofill like the first 250 characters from that. 
So you don't want to just like leave that and go. So here, this is what we have on this one. Um, so if you love to entertain, this will be the home of your dreams. Just some hard eyes, right? So kind of breaking up those sentences. Um, on 2.97 acres, you'll find a heated pool. And then it has a little umbrella, private backyard oasis, gourmet kitchen, butler's pantry with five bedrooms and separate living quarters. Click for more info. And then we've got the fingers pointing down, right? So minimal information about it. But thinking that you want to think about the house that you're advertising. This is why it's important to know about the house. So of course, if it's your listing, you'll know it well, right? If you were getting approval from another agent, read about it or go preview the house. You know what I mean? So that when you're writing this, because this is what I've noticed when I've been one-on-ones with people to set these up, we get to this part and this is where we really get stuck. Everything else is easy, but this part's hard. So to do this, you really want to know about the house. You want to see it because you want to know what's so great about this that everybody else needs to know, right? Like what's going to make them want to see more? Because our idea here, like we're advertising, so we want to get people to click. We want to give them just enough where they're like dipping their toe in and we want them to like, okay, just jump in. We want you to click on here and see everything about this house. So I was reading her description of this one and looking through the pictures. And to me, a lot of it was about like, okay, just like, people that like to host, right? Like entertaining, they've got all of this stuff at the house that benefits that. So I wrote the ad copy really directed at that type of person because it seemed like that would be the ideal buyer, right? For this house. So when you're doing this, you wanna think about who's the ideal buyer for the listing you're advertising, right? Is this great? Like first time home buyer place? Is this a great investment property? You know, really think about the person who would live in that house and write this ad copy towards them, right? Because um, at the end of the day, you just never, you never know like who's going to want something. But at the same time, you, at, through this business, you start to learn like, okay, what stands out to certain people, right? So as you're writing your ad copy, Always keep tabs here on this uh, word, this uh, letter count or character count, right? So yeah, it will not let you go over the 250 either. It'll just stop letting you type, which I think is good because then you're like, okay, I've been cut off. <laughs> I got to reevaluate, right? I got to go back. So it helps if you feel like you're more of like a wordy person, you know, like it will tell you no. <laughs> um, and then to, um, to add emojis, you can actually use this little smiley face in the bottom right corner of that text box. And you click it, and then you can search up here for whatever you want to do. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> um, I have a question. Yeah. If we don't have a listing, mm -hmm. and we're going to do one that's like text white and bars, what mm -hmm. photograph do we use that will confirm that? Yeah. It, um, it really just depends on exactly what your ad is. I'm going to show some other examples of ones too after I go through this one and we'll kind of talk through more kind of ideas on, on that too. Because there's, there's really like, as long as you brand it, like it can be anything, you know, um, home value, that's a really good one. And I think I, that is one I have an example of in here that I'm going to show too. So hopefully that will, so we'll, we'll park that and we will get to that question. Um, so on these emojis here, you can search for what you need. So like if you were wanting to put the house emoji, you just search house, you'll get these um, cute little images here. Make sure to look closely at these because this one, these right here are like cute little houses. And then if you look at this one, the front door is like boarded up. <laughs> um, so don't accidentally use that in your advertising like a $500,000 house. Because <laughs> at first, I didn't even know that one was in there. Um, so I know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. And it was a Hindu temple. And I clicked on it because it was a yellow house. Oh. And it said Hindu temple. You're like, that's not what I was looking for. So, like, when I was searching for something for the pool, like, I think I put, like, summer, I can't remember, maybe, I don't even remember what made me find that, the umbrella. Was it pool? No. Beach. Beach, maybe that was it. Yeah, there's one. There's, like, the umbrella there. So, like, just kind of think broad about what type of little thing you're, you're looking for. Um, the hard eyes emoji is 
literally, it's crazy to me that there's actual research about the specific emojis, and that's like one of the top three is the heart eyes. So, uh, this one right here. It's on my frequently heart. used. Heart. Oh, yes, heart eyes. Heart. Sorry. Heart eyes. Hearts for eyes. Um, so, I have that one in mind here, but that's literally one of like the top three. I wish I could remember the other two, but I can't. I heard it on a call once. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, okay, so main ad copy. So yeah, think of that as like your, it's like your attention getter. Like what's going to get people's attention? Um, so when I'll show you those other examples as well too in just a minute. Yeah. What would, what are the rules about, um, what text passages would you need to create? Because I know there's like this per number, but the office number has to be in a certain thing. And so that's a great question. It's different in every state. So we'll yes, I know. <laughs> We were talking yesterday in our meeting about how from like um, the California rules, like so different and like what we have to have here. So here's the thing with that. There's actually going to be a place down here. You'll notice how, see, it's already overlaid the logo for me automatically, as well as the office disclaimer on the opposite side. Um, when you are advertising it, the rule on social media is one click away from advertising compliance. And when we say advertising compliance, we do mean the three elements. So logo, firm number, and disclaimer. And so that is why we recommend as long as you have a branded cover photo on your Facebook business page with those three items that is compliant, they're one click away from it. So you don't technically have to have it displaying on this. Okay. So the branded cover photo and, and make sure on that that like, the other rules will apply to that, like the, the um, your name can't be bigger than the firm logo, but there's no rule about the phone number size. So your cell phone number can be like bam in your face, as long as ours is there, legible, that kind of thing. Um, so as long as it is one click away from that, then you're kind of set with it. Does that kind of clarify yeah. that? So the ones we already have going don't have, because we don't have branded image, we don't have the disclaimer on the image. Okay. So we had that in the text. Okay, yeah, and that's fine. Thanks. Yep, yep, that's absolutely fine. If it is in the caption of it, then it can be it can be in here, um, and or the ad copy of it, um, or if you're just doing a regular post on social media, it can be in there. The branded cover photo will really help protect you because it just is always there, and so it keeps you that one click away. Um, also, we're going to talk later too about this learn more button and where it goes. And if you're sending it to your website for anything, then, um, you have like, um, uh, that is compliant as well too. So you've almost got like either way they click, they're getting to this where they have all those elements. So then it's okay. So the logo, um, on that one, uh -huh. as well on the one I'm playing with doesn't. Um, so that's actually going to be down here in the media. So over here, um, you can, so it's going to upload typically the one you have as a default, but you can X that out and upload the different version of it. Cause we do have the six versions of transparent logos. I usually try to email those out when you join. Um, but if anybody has like misplaced them and you need them, feel free. I can email them to you, but there's like the all white, white and gray, all black, the the red and gray, red and white, I think. There's quite a few. So that way, whatever image you're using, if you do run into something like that, where it's like, you can't see it, you know, then we have those options. So yeah, that's where you'll do that in that media section. And if it's like funky on one side, it'd be better on the other side, you can tell it you want it to go on the left instead of the right. It just defaults to one of them. So when, you, when you post this ad, it, are, it automatically puts on top the Keller Williams of Cleveland sponsored ad on there, right? So mine says Keller Williams Cleveland because that's our office business page. Yours will say like whatever your business page is named. It'll say John Just KW Cleveland if that's what it's named. And it will show your photo there too. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And it'll, that'll, that'll, that'll be selected it, at the bottom. That'll make it compliant no matter what the picture is. It's crazy. Uh -huh. Uh, it's not that that makes it compliant. It's them being one click. So clicking on your business page when they get to that, you know, you have that picture at the top yeah. that has all the information. That's what keeps it compliant. The one click away, basically. Okay. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Almost as long as we're going through command and putting that on there, 
it's going to be fine. <laughs> yep, as long as you have the braided cover photo, which you do have. Okay. Yes, you have. It's that one with like the I think it has the house, the house. and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Um. So yes, and and then of course it will also overlay the um, the um, logo and that disclaimer on there always for you. So <clears throat> second text box here is your headline. That's going to show up under that bold. Very minimal characters on here. Only twenty five. I kept typing and it was cutting me off. You know, I would be like, okay, this is gonna sound great. Never mind, this wouldn't work. So on this one, I just did something like your dream home awaits, right? Because you wanna think emotionally when it comes to um, advertising, right? Because one of the main things about advertising is getting, like pulling people's heartstrings, right? Getting their emotions. So them imagining something is their dream home, right? Like things like that. So there's all these like kind of trigger words that can help you with things like that. Um, that's why I think it's great to look through examples of different ads people have run. So that's why I'll show you a couple of those others. Um, there's also a great, great Facebook group. If you guys are not a member of it, write this down. It's called Command Your Conversion. It is run by um, these two guys that are KW agents. And they, I have learned everything about campaigns basically from their videos and like workshops that I've attended virtually. But, uh, no, it is a Facebook group. So you can request to join it. Um, and they, a lot of times people will post like ads that they've run in there that were successful and things like that. It's a great resource, all kinds of other stuff too, but very much like uh, lead generation type stuff through command. So Make a note of that one. Request to join That's it. the name of the group. Yep. Command your conversion. Yes. I'm pretty sure. Let me look. The more I say it, I'm like, is it? I think, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is what you'll see at the top of it. It looks like a, it says like command your morning. So <clears throat> request to join that. You'll see like not, it's not just stuff like this, but um. I have definitely found great examples that I've taken screenshots of by just scrolling through that. But there are great people on there that you can learn a lot from on there. Um, okay, so back to this. So that headline, it's going to be bold and stand out. So keep it short, but make it something like something that is like so important that you feel like you have that like everybody needs to know about the house or something like that or where it is. Um, if that's a big deal, if it's in like a um, like say if it's in the historic district, whatever, we know that's always like a good, like verbiage to focus on, right? Cause there's people that would love to live in the historic district of downtown. So maybe it's like, um, if you mentioned something about like historic Cleveland home or something like that, whatever will fit. Like I said, I had trouble yesterday because I was like, man, I keep having like three characters. I just need three more characters for it. But the thing about it is there is a reason that all these things are cut off. The amount of research that has gone into uh, like what works best on this, what performs best, like how closely the people at KWRI work with the group at Facebook that does this for us. Like they're just constantly evaluating what's going to make this the most successful because the whole goal is they want to make this as easy as possible for you guys so that you can, can just do what you want to do, which is working with buyers and sellers, right? That's why you're in the real estate business is to work with people. You're not in it because you want to do all this stuff. This is just stuff that you kind of end up having to do too, right? So they want it to be as easy as possible. So the even things like these cutoff for how many characters there are, those are all very important. Then the description, um, I have, Click learn more to view photos of this beautiful home. It will also offer you suggestions on there that you can shuffle through. There's a couple suggestions on there. You can have it be an action step about like scheduling a showing, things like that. What I have learned from <clears throat> all the ads that I have like, like seen talked about on videos and things like that is like just saying like what they're going to get when they click on that button um, and then knowing like, okay, we're really just, I'm clicking to get like more info and more pictures, right? It's, it's just like I'm clicking to see that information. That's going to help you get people there. Um, if it says something about like 
scheduling a showing or scheduling a private tour with me today, they might feel like that's what they're requesting when they click that button. Now, there might be scenarios where that is what you want. Absolutely play around with it and stuff like that, but just keep in mind that's what that description is referring to is what's going to happen when they click on that button. <clears throat> so when you have your ad copy all created, like I said, that's always the that's always the hardest part. That's what takes the most time on there. So when you're doing that, um, and feel free ever if you're like, if you want to like email me and say, hey, I was thinking about putting this as my ad copy. What do you think? Or do you have any suggestions? Things like that. I cannot write your ads for you, but I'm always happy to read them and say, you know what? I would maybe reword this or something like that. I don't mind that at all, but I do want everybody to know it. I cannot, you know, I will not be able to write ad copy for every agent that we have. Uh, plus, you don't want me to. I'm not a professional marketer either. <laughs> I just am like, oh, learning more about it the more that I do. So I am learning more just from like reading things on that Facebook group, seeing what other people post, seeing you guys run ads and, and what is successful for you guys. So um, then you'll, uh, it does have a link to, the advertising policies for Facebook. So if you're not familiar with those, you can always review them. There are obviously advertising rules and things like that on there. Uh, if I'm totally honest, I do not know every single one of them. So that you probably don't want to ask me. You probably want to look here. <laughs> and then you will say. When you save it, does it save it to a draft? Yes, yeah. So you do have to click save draft when you're done to make sure. But you don't want to do that until you're ready to be out of it right now. So if you were like, if you were just writing that and then you were going to come back to it, you would click save draft over there. So the next one below text is media. So first thing, of course, when we pulled a listing in, it defaulted to the first image, your, the main photo. And if that's the one you wanted to use as your main image, great. If it wasn't, you can change that here. You can also have up to five images that will carousel. So, <clears throat> couple tips. Uh, yeah, you can open media. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and you can also do a video instead. If you do that, you do want it to be kind of short, right? Because you want it to be something that if it's too long, people aren't going to, they're not going to watch it, so then they're not going to click. Um, so, I will say ads tend to perform better when they do have the carousel of images. What's really cool is because you can have up to five, um, if say there's this like, say there's a huge part of it is like that back, you said there was a backyard oasis. So like the private backyard area. Say that as people were scrolling, that's the image that was getting them to click the most. It will start to display that image as the primary one. So another, that's another thing it does. It learns those things, right? So that if that's what's getting the clicks and it's not the front of the house, then they're going to shift it and have that be the primary one. The other ones are still going to show there in the carousel, but it does that because it knows that's what's getting people to click on your ad more too. So if you wanted to add more photos or if you were creating some type of ad that wasn't about a listing, this is where you would come and you could choose that image. So if I click add more, it will show me all of those listing photos, right? So it's connected to the MLS. So there's that like pool area. So maybe I wanted to put that. Why won't it select? There we go. So I'll click it and then I do preview and crop image. And you're going to notice this right here. See how it's defaulting to this square and it says best for most placements. And I do have the option for why. Okay, so you want to consider where you're running the ad. If it is just Facebook, you can do the why. If you are doing, yeah, if you're doing Instagram and you're doing it in the Instagram feed, so that's where you scroll through it, you would want to do square. If you're doing, um, because you can, it does give you the option to choose, do you want the ad to be on the Instagram feed or Instagram stories? And, you know, stories are what you click through at the top. There where people are like talking about their day, oh, yeah. stuff like that. Those are like vertical video. So, and vertical images. So you do want to choose like, these right here. So consider that based on where you're going to run the ad um, so that you know that everybody sees what they're getting and it will show you what it looks like once it's cropped and I believe you can maybe zoom a little in and out but of course it will kind of cut off there. 
So then I would save image. <clears throat> and so I changed these to square. And so now you'll see like it's going to cycle through the images that I have. So you can have up to five on there. You don't have to have five. If there's not five great photos of it, then don't worry about it. But I would try to have at least more than one because it's going to help potentially get you more leads because you never know what's going to make people click. And on that topic, I'm going to shift over to this one. Where is it? This right here. So this was an example of a uh, advertising of a listing over here. This had some great tips on it. So like they had this picture of the house. They said, live in a completely renovated ranch, full bath in each bedroom, large kitchen, new flooring, new deck. Click below for info and photos before it's too late. So then what we we were saying before it's too late. So we're making people think like, ooh, like I need to get on this, right? Like get this before, get it while it's hot, right? Like the hot sign's on at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> um, and then below that, they said completely renovated ranch for sale. Now I think they have minimized how much text since this one was run because it does look longer than the 25 characters, but like completely renovated, even something like that. So if that's something that's really important about it, um, then having that on there. So a couple tips that were with this ad, um, always using high quality of exterior photos on here. So if you don't have one, um, use a photo of a bedroom, a living room, sunroom, something like that. This I thought was really helpful and listen to the whole thing. So consider the whole part of it. So don't use kitchen or bathroom photos unless it's been renovated. There's like a tub that stands out um, or you're not, you can't tell if it's like an open layout based on pictures. But then it says if the kitchen is really nice, ignore this. So uh, because home buying decisions weigh heavily, rely heavily on those two rooms. So if somebody sees something they don't like, they're not going to click, which isn't going to help you be able to find them whatever home might work for them. Because what we know from these ads is that you want to think about uh, from this perspective, you're not running this ad just so you can try to sell this listing. You're running this ad really so that you can attract buyers, right? Because we know that most of the people that click on it, they're not going to want to go and write an offer on this house today, but they're now a new lead in your command that they may have clicked on it, clicked through it, uh, it's out of my price range, whatever. But you've gotten that lead and now you're able to nurture it, follow up with them, and hopefully help them find whatever it is that works for them. And so a photo of a kitchen that's not that great, if that's something that people really do make their decisions based on, you're not going to get those clicks, right? So I thought that was a super helpful tip. So keep that in mind. Same thing with bathrooms. That one I didn't think of, but um, I guess that that decisions are made based on those too. So um, keep in mind if it's not something that's like really renovated or standout feature, or it's not like this gorgeous kitchen, then try to use some other images. Also, really consider like it is totally fine if you aren't having like, you know, if you can't always have a professional photographer take photos of your listing and things like that, but consider the fact that you do want like nice looking photos. So even if you're taking them with your iPhone, like try to get like good angles, good lighting, things like that, because um, good photos are also really going to help you get clicks as well. If the picture is bad, the house could be gorgeous, but it's hard to tell from the image that's really dark, or it's got a glare, you know, things like that. So it's possible to have super professional looking photos that you take on your on your smartphone these days, right? Because the cameras are like just insane that we get to carry in our pockets now, basically, with these. So just keep that in mind, good lighting and, and angles and things like that if you are taking the images so that you can use them on there. So... <clears throat> Back to our media, we would select all of our images. It will put your default logo from your marketing profile and it will default to probably the right, but you can change it if you'd rather have it on the left side. And what it does, it just swaps um, the logo with the disclaimer on there. And then you do wanna click include my ownership statement on here. Now what I will point out, um, we do ask that it say each Keller Williams office so it doesn't default to that, but you can add it. So you'll just type each Keller Williams office. 
and then you'll click apply. Okay. Yes, it is below the DBA logo, so you have to check the box for it to show up. based on the campaign goal. I need to look into that and see because I think y'all both have a similar one selected, whereas mine's a listing one, so it could be different. But what I will say is it's still linking to that business page, so as long as that cover photo is branded, it's going to be on there. So I would just make sure that that's there before running it. Um, that's what I did. Now, I am doing a listing, uh -huh. and I do have it. You have it? I, it has to, must may have to do with that. Um, which is very interesting. I don't know. What ad goal did you choose? No. Okay. What did you choose? Not this. <laughs> okay. So yeah. that, yeah. I, that yeah. might be yeah. it. I need to look into that because that is very interesting because it should be showing up on all of them. So I may need to. Because it's also not adding the disclaimer to the image. Like on yours, it also is adding, it's adding the logo and on Pops of the logo, it's adding that phrase. It's not adding that. Yes, the other phrase that was already on here has to do with the listing that I have attached to it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it would not have both lines on it since it's not a, <coughs> a listing that you're advertising. However, it still should have this option right here. And that's weird that it's not showing up. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, check into that and see if that's maybe just an issue that's happening with the specific campaign goals. So I'll report that to support. Um, but... Again, as long as the cover photo is branded on this business page that it's going to and you click on it and it is visible and legible there, it is one click away from it. So, uh, but I will look uh, into that and report that issue. I'll send them some screenshots and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> so then I save that media. So then we have Facebook and Instagram settings. So we click to configure those. This is where I was mentioning if you did have multiple business pages connected to your account in this drop down menu, you can choose between them there. So if you do have something else that you do outside of real estate, I know we have some agents that do um, and you have a business page for that, another family business, anything like that, you'll ch just make sure to choose it. Um, and then if you are doing the Instagram one, this is where you choose where do you want it to show up, feed or story. It can be either. But keep in mind, the way you select your images, you want to go to the, the right places there. Now, this is the super important part right here. So, generally, what you want to use is Facebook Lead Generation Form. What that's going to do, that's going to be just like if you were running it on Facebook where it tells, like, you can go in and pull, like, all the leads from it. This is what allows the leads to feed directly into command for you. So instead of having to enter them into your database, they're going to come automatically in here. You're going to get notifications from your little notification bell at the top right when you get those new leads. That has to happen with this Facebook lead generation form. It will make you open like a separate window, I think, and agree, agree to those terms and stuff like that. Then you may have to reselect it after that. But um, that's what's going to allow them to feed directly in here. And the information that it brings you is name, email and phone number. So they are pretty full leads with that. Now what I will say, that information pulls from their profiles. What happens is they click learn more and before they're taken to wherever you're sending them, say that's your website, um, the lead generation form comes up and it pre-fills it from their information. So they see that it's filled in their name, email and phone number and then they click that they're okay with sending it. Um, a lot of times people don't read it and they just click agree let's go I want to see the pictures you know um but sometimes I'll get people that say I keep getting like these bad phone numbers you know what I mean like they don't like their the phone number's out of service or something like that some people when they see that it's sending it to you they may change it right based on that because we know that we're like oh my gosh I don't want to get in more emails or I don't want them having my phone number so that's bound to happen don't get discouraged by that in there because if you've got, like, then try the email address, you know, if the phone number's bad or vice versa. Maybe they just changed their email because they didn't want more emails, you know. 
in their inbox, but the phone number was good or something like that. So don't get discouraged by those. There are no bad leads either, right? There are no bad leads. There are only agents that are unwilling to follow up with frequency and intensity with their leads, right? <laughs> I have to, right? It, it, even though I'm like, it, it, it all translates into the technology, right? So that is one of the number one things I'll hear from people is they will say, well, I, ca I called all those leads. I called all 25 leads that I got and nobody answered or nobody wanted to talk to me. Okay, great. Call them again next week. Okay, send them an email next week. We got to follow up with them frequently because when you're getting internet leads, especially ones on Facebook, think about it this way. They're not on there because they're looking for a house. They're literally just scrolling, right? And then they see this house that looks great. So most of the time, these people are not somebody who's ready to go like sign a buyer's rep and write up an offer right now or put their house on the market. You may get lucky and find something like that, and that's great. But you want to think about these are just ways for you to build your database up, get more people in it, and an opportunity to nurture those relationships. So you might not see the fruit from these leads for, it might be a year, right? But that's why it's so important because then all of a sudden, a year from now, you've got five of these people that are like raring to go, right? And um buy a house. You just never know. So um, I will say that is the number one thing that I'll sometimes hear from people. They just get discouraged very easily when you're making those calls. So you want to think about it that way. It's just follow up, follow up, follow up. Don't get discouraged when they don't answer. You know, it's like, how many times do you walk into a store and the person there says, can I help you find anything? Most of the time you say no, right? No, I don't need anything right now. And every time I go in there, no, I don't need anything. And then one time, I'm like, you know what? Actually, today I was really looking for something specific for my living room at my house. You know what I mean? Like I need something that day. I may have walked in that store 10 times and told them no every time, right? But then there's the one time that you say yes. So keep calling them, keep texting them, unless they say, delete my number, you know, I'm <laughs> like, do not contact me. But like, if they're just not responding or like saying no thanks, like keep following up, right? And of course, always um, make sure that you're not calling people that are on the do not call registry. I know that's a really important thing. Um, so anyway, so that is your... You the Huh? If they gave you the number through the form, See, that's that what I would think they're giving it to you through that, so they've consented for it. I don't know what that lead generation form says in it or whatever, but it's not a bad idea to still verify it, I think, um, because it does give you that. They just put that disclaimer in here a lot, I think, because they, because of lawsuits that have happened. You know what I mean? That can be fine. Yeah. Like $40,000. It's something something. crazy, yeah. right? And I'm like, people call my phone all the time. I don't want you to take me off your list. Uh-huh. Okay. Like, oh, and are they paying 40 grand? I know. I'm like, like, what? And I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> so I don't know if maybe best practice is still to like always look it up just to be safe. You never know. But at the end of the day, you are absolutely right. They saw it that they were sending you their number. And I'm sure there's some type of disclaimer on that, like lead generation form that Facebook has. Um, I have a screenshot of it somewhere because one time I actually did scroll past an ad that one of our agents was running. It showed up for me, so I screenshotted it because um, keep in mind, like when you run these ads, you're not going to go to your business page and see it there as a post because those no. And the reason is you don't those pe people already like your business page. You don't want to pay to target them, right? You want to pay to expose yourself more to get more exposure on social media. So what happened was I just happened to get her sponsored post on mine. It was Kathy Lee. So I took a screenshot of the lead form because I wanted to see exactly what it looked like. So I'll have to find that and see if it says anything about the phone number part on it. Um, and I know we're going uh, a few minutes over. If anybody needs to go, that's totally fine. I just noticed what time it was. Um, but I will go and finish What's this part up. What? What is that? Yes. So that's where we're going next. So this is where you can choose like what that button says over there. So it just says learn more, sign up, or apply now. So basically oh, learn, more. learn more is the most, uh, <laughs> see ya. No problem. Let's make sure Marty listens about the smart plan. Okay. okay. <laughs> so learn more 
is the least invasive part, right? So that's why we usually recommend using that one because they're just clicking it to learn. Um, so here is where you're going to choose where does learn more take them. So once they click learn more and then the lead form comes up and they say, yes, send my information, where do they go? So you have a couple options. Um, you can create like landing pages, so like an individual site that you're sending people to. If you're advertising a listing, I would find the listing on your website and copy the link to it so that they go directly to it. So for example, if I go to my site, Lord, I wish I could remember what that address was of that house, 3235. Let's, let's hope I don't have any problem finding it. What did I say, Mountain Point? Um, I just went to another window and opened my website. Yeah, that, that thing's kind of sketchy. Sometimes it'll pop okay. up. Sometimes it'll take a day or two. And I noticed too here lately, if it's a fresh listing, like one day old, mm -hmm. a lot of times it won't show up on, on that day. Yeah, there's um, there's different IDX agreements and things like that, that sometimes things just can take a little bit more time on it. So I've got the listing pulled up right here. So what I would do is I could click on that. You could also make a landing page with the listing information on it. Of course, that's not we're not getting into it on here. Huh? Oh, I've just never edited it to my page because that's something else I don't know how to do. <laughs> oh, we're talking about the featured listing. You just scroll up and search for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, search for it like as if you're a client on there searching. Okay. So when you pull mm -hmm. up the listing, you're able to just take this URL from up here, copy it, and we can paste that into command as where we want them to go. So then they're going to the specific listing on your site to get all the information. Mm -hmm. And usually what I've been doing, I mean, I guess that works too, but what I've been doing is they get one of those, as they go down to the share button mm -hmm. and hit share, and then hit, when I go when I'm posted somewhere, just hit control V and it'll put it up there. So yep. I tried doing it that way and it wouldn't work. If I'm landing them, I think if I'm landing them to the K and W thing of it, but it wouldn't show me as the agent. Oh, yeah, as long as you're on your website, this link, it, but it had, you have to get every piece of that link on yeah. there or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, and that, that will work when you're posting it on there, too. Um, this wants that specific link. So, as long as you have that link on there, however you obtain it, you just have to get it, and that's what we're going to paste on there. And you could also be sending them just to your website. Like, it depends on, it really depends on what the ad is that you're running, right? Um, so... We just want them to get somewhere. So then I would take that. So we had to copy and paste that. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to paste it as the website URL. So now I, it already had the HTTPS part down here and I knew that it copied that with it. So I deleted that before I pasted it. So I didn't double up on that. <clears throat> and then if you had created a landing page which again that's kind of a separate a separate class but that's just like a one page website that you can make for really whatever type of ad you want to run you would be able to choose it from here so that I have all I don't even know I had all these <laughs> oops so then um, I'm going to start talking about um, ad targeting now. So if you if you're you know copying and pasting, that's that's fine. Um, I just want to make sure that we kind of get all the content covered. So here for your audience, it defaults to a 20 mile radius of Cleveland. Okay, you can use custom settings and target a custom audience, right? So you can change this radius up to 50 miles. You can change where it's advertising. So. I have even had people that like with very like maybe some luxury properties or whatever um, properties on the river things like that like they may have targeted other areas based on people relocating to purchase things like that right so you're not limited to just advertising this right here um, you may say hey more like Chattanooga or something like that I want to go a little bit further um, anything like that you can change that here but this is what's really cool you can add in the expert targeting, which is optional. 
but you can add interests. So um, you can try to find, uh, maybe you want to target people that were, have looked at like mortgage calculators, mortgage loans, like um, house hunting, anything people are doing on Facebook, most of that is tracked, right? Um, unless you disable things like that on there. But what's great about that, when you think about it in terms of you're creating these ads, if everything that people are looking at on and, and off Facebook, if their activity is tracked, we can use that to our benefit for these ads, right? Because if we know that they're looking at, say, Zillow, I think that's one I can type on here, <clears throat> um, unless that has changed. Yeah, if we know that they're looking at Zillow, they're probably looking at homes, right? So let's target them. Let's kind of narrow our, our audience so it's not just going out to everybody blindly, but we're trying to find people that we know are actually looking for homes. And also, if you have a very specific type of property, maybe you have in, there's interests based on that that you want to search for. Um, so some more generic ones are things like Zillow, Realtor.com. I'm pretty sure house hunting is one. Yeah, so house hunting... Uh, like I mentioned, the mortgage ones, if they're looking for, like, if they're looking at mortgage calculators, they're calculating how much they can afford. Those are great people to target too, right? Um, so. Does it still do it in the uh, 50 mile radius when you do that? Or whatever mm -hmm. radius you Yeah. Yep, yeah, whatever radius you've chosen. And then you can keep selecting them and save. I'm right here in this targeting part. So where you add interests so it'll find people that match all of those so it expands kind of like getting that um, audience there and this is different they've added this so narrow the audience I don't know what that does is that under BC? Uh, where's it's still it's just right under uh, where we put the link you just keep scrolling a little bit I see audience oh, so turn audience on Yep, you use custom settings is what, yeah. And then you're able to do the targeting there. So you can search for different things like that. So feel free to kind of think about it as you're looking on there, like what type of people, like I said before, think about your ideal buyer, right? So who's your ideal buyer for the house? Is it someone that likes to have parties? Is it like, is it on the river? So they like boating and things like that and try to find different interests. You can search anything on there, and the worst thing that happens is it doesn't exist on there, and then you think of something else, right? But um, the targeting will really help you just narrow down the type of people that are going to see your ad, right? Because if you're spending money for people to see it, you want to try to get people that are hopefully going to make you money at some point in time, right? <laughs> it charges you for, for how many people it reaches out to, right? You actually pay, like you choose your budget. So you say 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And then you say over the course of X amount of days, and it divvies up the money per day. Yep, and that happens, uh, I think, actually on the next step. So, or close. So, I would save these settings. Um, I'm going to skip over lead settings and go to budget first, and then I'll come back to lead settings. There's a reason I'm going to skip that one first. So, I'm going to go to duration and budget. So, this is where you choose the time frame of the campaign and the money, right? So, they recommend... 10-day campaigns with a budget of a dollar a day. At the end of the day, you do not have to do that. That's just based on research that they've done. But a lot of times people like to really just trial and error stuff, right? So maybe a three-day campaign, maybe a seven-day campaign, spending 10 bucks, you know? Um, keep in mind, if you are doing two channels, like Facebook and Instagram, like it is going to divide what you're spending amongst both of those places. So you would choose when you want to start it. They can take up to 24 hours to start. What is what is today? Oh, it is the 15th. <laughs> um, okay, so I would choose, say I wanted it to start tomorrow. So I would choose tomorrow, and then maybe I want to run it for hmm, till like Wednesday. So five days. Do a five-day campaign, see how that goes, right? Then I choose my total budget. It defaults to 30, you can just change that. So say I wanted to do $15. Why is that? Why is that? Is that <laughs> yeah, you have to do your date and then you do your budget. And so since they recommend the dollar per day per like per channel, 
kind of consider that as well. So right here, this is saying daily, it's going to spend $1.50 per channel. So it's going to spend a little bit more than that. With my, but I'm only spending 15 bucks total for it to run over five days. So that's not too bad, right? Um, and you do have some options here. So this says distribute evenly across the channel. So that says, okay, it's going to it's gonna split that $15 just right down the middle for Facebook and Instagram. But you also have this option that says use automatic placements. What this does is it, Facebook uses their algorithm to spend your money wisely. So if they notice that more people are clicking on it on Instagram, they're gonna push more of your money towards Instagram or vice versa. If more of your money is, if more people are clicking on it on Facebook, they're not gonna put as much of your money towards Instagram because they know where you're getting the ads. So again, that whole algorithm is actually really to your benefit with that stuff because all of this stuff is working in the background of your ads to make sure that you are getting the best return on your investment, right? So then you would save your budget and you have that set up. So lead settings, I skipped over that one. So I'm gonna go back to that. So this is where smart plans come in. When you go to run a Facebook ad, the best thing you can do for yourself is to have a smart plan set up that's going to help you with follow-up. And there is now, literally this just happened like in the last week, where you can automatically tell the campaign to assign everybody that comes in to a smart plan by default. That literally just happened a week ago. Before that, you had to, you did have to manually put them on it, but this time, every time a lead comes in, they'll automatically go on a smart plan that you have created. So I'm gonna give you a couple suggestions for that. Obviously do a full class on smart plans, and I'll also be happy to do one-on-one -on -one as far as any like training you feel like you need on those. But, <clears throat> What you do here is you you can also like auto have it auto tag them as a, in contacts so we know our tags in our contacts so like um, Facebook lead or something like that um, you can create a custom tag that you want it to go to and here's all your tags are going to show up too right so you can choose that not it's not required but then you can also choose from your smart plans. So obviously you want to have that set up before you run the plan if you want it to automatically add them. If you don't have it set up, then you can always like save it as a draft, which is what I'm going to do and show you a couple of those suggestions that, um, and ones that I would recommend you guys look at because there's not necessarily a one size fits all smart plan that works for every Facebook campaign that you do, right? You're going to have to customize it a little bit each time depending on what you're advertising and, and things like that, and also making it sound a little more like you. But the best part is we have the Smart Plans library, and so you can really take things from there and just rip off and duplicate is the, the famous, like, you know, term on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save a draft up here really quick. Um, and, of course, once we had chosen those, you would literally publish your campaign there. It'll ask you for your credit card information and stuff like that to put into command. Um, and then you're able to publish this. So I'm gonna save this draft and just really quickly show you a couple ideas for some smart plans that you guys should look through, read through, because you wanna make sure everything you send, you know what it's gonna say on it, right? We don't wanna send stuff to people blindly and not know exactly what it says, and then they're like, you sent me this weird email, and you're like, wait, I didn't read that, and the other, like it had like, it was you know an agent in another state and something was very different, you know? So over here on the left, <coughs> smart plans, I'm going to click that. So I found a couple here um, in the smart plans library. So what I did was I went to library. Things you can search are literally you can search Facebook. And look at all of these options for smart plans. Every one of them, you can view the steps. So what I did is I kind of started going through like the steps of them. Hmm? Oh, I put in Facebook and had a message. Did you press enter? Is Facebook two words? Uh, no, I have it as one word. Oh, 
Oh, you had to go to the library. Yes, we're in the library part. So they won't be in your smart plans until you add them there. So I can click view steps on any one of these plans and see what the steps are for it. So I can hover over them and see this must be somebody in Hawaii because they literally have aloha <laughs> in it. So those are things that you would want to make sure, okay, well, I love everything it says, but I need to just change that because that doesn't necessarily make as much sense here, right? Because it might feel like not as authentic if that's not something you normally say to people, right? Because these people that are on these smart plans right here, they probably don't know you or have never met you, right? And their first impression they get from you after they click on their ad, your ad is going to be these things that they're getting from the smart plan. And then say you talk to them on the phone and they're like, this doesn't even sound like the same person, you know? Like, so verbiage is important, right? If you read something and it's like, I wouldn't say it like that. Make it more authentic. What? What? <laughs> yeah, throw in whatever. Whatever. If it make if it sounds like you because you want people, you don't want them to feel like they're on this automated follow-up plan, right? Because we know how we can kind of tell sometimes when we're getting emails or texts or things like that from like companies, like when it feels like we're just on something in somebody's system, right? So there is a way to take these smart plans and really make them feel like it's a personal touch, even when it's necessarily not. Our goal is to make them feel like it is, but leverage the system somehow with it. Um, and these smart plans can include phone calls, tasks, uh, emails, uh, and text messages. The text messages, you do have to have Twilio set up for that. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. It's super easy to get it all kind of up and going, um, unless it's defaulting to the office, right? Yep. <laughs> Don was setting us up the other day, and it was like doing something weird, but we we'll always have a fix for it. So yeah, Twilio, it huh? Yeah, it works. Yeah, and so we got it working. Um, but Twilio will allow you to text people through smart plans from command. Um, so really, really awesome, especially for this kind of lead follow-up, because you're able to get these texts out to people so quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, just a second. Uh, on any of the plans, it'll show up here on the left. Mm -hmm. I just need to go. Yeah. Okay. I did the one smart plan about the uh, if I don't have email, you know, sending a text to the number. Yeah. I had to change it, put my name in there. I kept on trying it out my girlfriend's phone, so I figured it out and got that right. But uh, I didn't get a chance to check on uh, when I was doing that with hers. And I sent out, I think, about five of them. Mm -hmm. Does it automatically direct them back into command or? The text messages? Yes. It I does. Know. Okay. Yep. So. so it will, you will see, you can go to the contact record and see the history of the contacts. And then also, if they reply to you, you can get, you'll get a notification up here in this, as well as in the Kelly app on your phone that lets you know you got a message and you can click on it and go to their contact record. So be careful to not accidentally dismiss your notifications. Oh my goodness, I got them on here. I didn't realize that. You got some on there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, now I gotta go reply. So you can reply within command and all of that too. Um, so another thing you can search, not just Facebook, is um, think about doing, like putting these people on some type of eight by eight. An eight by eight is, is um, it's definitely easier to set up because you think about like it's eight touches over eight weeks, right? So it's one some type of touch every week, right? Um, I also would recommend, even aside from that, like let the first thing you do when you see those leads still be to reach out and call them too, right? Like try to make that connect initial connection quickly as well too, because even if maybe they're getting an email from you, if they're getting a phone call too, like they may not have. They may not read all of these things in the smart plan. That's why we want them to have quite a bit of touches that go on with it because it might take quite a bit of them to finally get them. You know what I mean? Um, but I searched eight by eight and I found this one, my eight by eight internet lead. And I viewed the steps on it and I thought it was a good one to kind of start with. Um, and what you could do is just customize this based on the type of ad you ran. So like this one, Hey, contact, first name and last name. So that's where it puts their name. That's what's great with like Twilio and stuff like that. It personalizes it. Um, thanks so much for reaching out and expressing an interest in purchasing your new home. So we could say there, um, thanks so much for clicking on that listing I advertised on Facebook. Did you have any questions about it or any other properties, right? So 
just something generic like that. You can make it more specific. You could put the, the address, like, thanks for clicking on that 123 Main Street listing. Did you have any questions about it or anything like that? Um, so I think asking the question helps because it gives them some, a reason to respond, right? So um, all of these things are customizable. And so this eight by eight, it's gonna just have a task or a text or an email and then delay for seven days. So then it's after a seven day delay, it, what it had in here was um, a really awesome, pretty branded email um, that's like talking about working with buyers. And so it has like basically like why people should work with you as a Keller Williams agent to help them buy a home. Um, seven day delay, gave you a phone call. It, this one even had like a script included with it. So some helpful tips on like that phone call that you make to them. So my advice would be to find yourself a couple options that you think would be great to have on hand for your Facebook campaigns. This is a lot like how we say before you can do a lot with smart plans for your database, you got to have your database set up, right? So before your campaigns that you run can be super successful, you want to have a couple of these default smart plans kind of personalized to you in your back pocket that are ready to go for when you run those campaigns. So I would browse the library, view the steps, add any ones you want, and then when you come into my smart plans over here, over on the right side, you can edit any of these. So you do the pencil That's icon. Huh? I'm, I'm, okay. Yep. Yep. You can edit. So that eight by eight internet lead one, I can click the pencil icon and this is where I can come in okay. and really just change exactly what everything says. <clears throat> so like what I did was this one where it's going to insert contact first name and last name. It had those kind of things for agent name and stuff. Well, I just went ahead and deleted all that and by default made it say my name, right? It's Jennifer Pauls from KW Cleveland because if it's your smart plan, it's always going to be from you, right? then I know exactly what it's gonna say there. So I can change any steps of those. So that would be my recommendation. Um, you find that eight by eight. I mean, there's like 360 It was on the top. Yeah, I typed eight by eight and it I was on. Eight, oh, eight so eight you can skip the Facebook part. Yeah, yes. this was just another thing you can search. So search Facebook leads, search eight by eight, internet lead, that might be another one as well. <laughs> um, so, just kind of find those, narrow them down, add them to your library, and start working on making them uh, work for you, be authentic to you, right? Because once you get a couple of these set up that you can kind of use for a lot of different scenarios, like I said, some depending on the ad you run, you might have to change it up a little bit, but like get you like a good one that would work for anytime you advertise a listing or anytime you're trying to just attract buyers. And that way you have those in place. That's going to make allow you to have the opportunity to run campaigns more frequently and successfully, right? Because you've got the follow-up already ready to go. So you can go through and do those and then you can have it automatically add everybody from there, from the campaign onto this. So I know we went quite a bit over on time. I'm sorry about that. There's just so many, like so much content with this to really kind of pull it all together. So I'll have probably, I think I have a smart plans class. Actually, it's not next week because we're out of the office next Thursday for a meeting in Atlanta, but it's the following week as a smart plans class on the calendar. So that'll be at the new building, new training room, all the space in there. So um, make sure if you do want to kind of learn more about the ins and outs of these, um, then put that on your calendar. And of course, if you need, if you need some help with any of them before then, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one with me, get on my calendar. I know I'll be, it'll be a little more limited over the next few days as we're moving, but after the beginning of next week when we're kind of settled in there, I'll have all the time on my schedule and we can get your smart plan set up. And I have a little table and chairs in my office for appointments. <laughs> yes, I'm going to really fancy. <laughs> I know, I know. See, I really was. I was in Julie's little closet in there. She 